More stem cells, more regeneration, more repair of the heart, longer survival. Less stem cells, you're in trouble. Do foods stimulate stem cells? And the answer is yes. Meet Dr. William Lee, a world-renowned Harvard-trained medical doctor, researcher, and president and a founder of the Angiogenesis Foundation. His work has led to more than 40 FDA-approved therapeutics and devices for cancer, cardiovascular disease, wound healing, and vision loss. He is also a New York Times best-selling author with Eat to Beat Disease, The New Science of How Your Body Can Heal Itself, and he recently published a new book, Eat to Beat Diet, Burn Fat, Heal Your Metabolism, and Live Longer. In today's video, we have extracted Dr. William Lee's teaching over the years and focus on the importance of hydration, and this video will list out three drinks, other than water, that Dr. William Lee frequently mentions in many of his seminars and talks. These top three beverages help stimulate the stem cell counts and help live longer. So stay watching until the very end for all the juicy details. Five tips to live healthier and longer. Number one, stay hydrated because dehydration actually makes everything in your body work harder. And so if you want your food to work for you, you actually want to make sure your body has enough water content to be able to keep all those metabolic processes functioning really well. Number two, I would say eat what you like but make sure that most of what you eat falls in the category of what we call plant-based foods. Third, I would say to the extent possible, avoid ultra-processed foods. The other thing that I would actually say that would be really helpful is to try to avoid foods with added sugars whenever you can. And the fifth thing I would actually say is that I want to come back to beverages for a second. You know, besides water, there's two other beverages that I think are go-tos for health. And one is tea, could be green tea, could be oolong tea, could be black tea. And the other one is coffee. Remarkably, you know, water, tea, and coffee are the go-tos for beverage and health. And what you add to them can make a big difference. So the first tip was to stay hydrated. And the final tip was to choose those beverages that are healthy. So let's now explore three drinks other than water that Dr. William Lee enjoys drinking himself as well as frequently share in his teaching that are really good for our health. At the very end of the video, Dr. William Lee will share what we should avoid drinking to stay healthy for longer. So don't miss out. First, green tea. Green tea especially has a natural polyphenol that's called catechins, EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate, EGCG. And the catechin is actually just part of the natural substance in the tea leaf. So whether you're brewing tea with a bag or whether it's loose leaf tea or whether it's matcha, which is just powdered tea leaves, the fact of the matter is that into the brew, into the liquid, hot liquid, comes all these phytochemicals, including these catechins. So when you sip straight tea, the catechins go right in. They're easily absorbed um, by your body. And so, you know, your, our blood levels of catechins go way up. So many things that catechins can do. One of the things that's important is that actually it's, it's a relaxant. It actually helps lower your stress. It lowers the catecholamines. And so uh, other things, it helps your lipids. It actually also helps fight cancer. It's anti-inflammatory. A substance that has so many beneficial things that at least when I drink tea, I want, I want to get as much as I can out of my food. Now we understand that green tea is very healthy, but I am sure there are many of you who indulge in black tea. Is black tea any good? Green tea will increase your stem cells, but guess what? So can black tea. You know, people in Asia drink a lot of tea. People in Britain drink a lot of tea as well. Yeah. We used to say green tea is good, black tea is fermented, so it's not going to be that good for you. We're changing our minds. We have to keep our minds open. Huh. Black tea can also double the number of stem cells. Then how about adding milk into tea? Does milk interfere with absorbing the bioactive components in tea? I deeply respect traditions of eating and drinking. And one of the things that, um, you know, I know is a tradition in England is, you know, you put, or in Ireland, you actually put some milk or cream into your tea. It actually um, changes the flavor profile and it's lovely. I've had plenty of teas in England before. I find it to be just such an uh, incredibly nice, put dairy in it. Here's what you need to know. Dairy, and I'm talking about cow dairy, right? So not, not, not milk. This is applies to cow dairy. We'll come back to the nut milk in a second. Cow dairy, okay, actually is fat. Milk has got fat in it, like butter, which is made out of milk. And the fat, when you put it into your tea, does change its flavor, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fact that when milk or cream is put into tea, the fat molecules in the cow dairy form little soap bubbles. These are microscopic soap bubbles. They're called micelles. Fat likes to stick with fat. Tea is mostly water. And so when you pour milk into tea, the dairy fat sticks together and a little makes a little tiny soap bubble. And what does it do? Those soap bubbles trap 
the polyphenols from tea. It traps the catechin. So you've got some good stuff wrapped in a soap bubble of dairy. And now when you drink the tea, the catechin is trapped in the soap bubble. It doesn't get absorbed as easily in your stomach. And it just rolls down your gut. And a lot of it comes out the other end. Okay. And so you're missing out on a lot of the good stuff. If you're drinking cow milk, dairy, put it in your tea, you're getting good flavor, but you're missing out on most of the polyphenols. So just be aware that that's what you're actually doing. Now, if you want to actually still cut the tea with something that is milk-like, nut milks are fine because they don't actually have the same fatty reaction that the cow dairy has. So almond milk, cashew milk, those soy milks, they're all fine. If you really cannot give up on the flavor of milk in your tea, there is an alternative. I had this discovery that might be uh, useful for your listeners who are in exactly that situation where they like the taste of milk in their tea. I discovered there is something called milk tea. It's actually from Taiwan. It's grown in the mountain. And it actually, it's, it's just pure tea leaves that when you brew it, it tastes like it's got dairy in it. He is referring to a native Taiwanese green tea called Jinxian tea, which can be translated as milk oolong tea. Jinxian tea have a unique milk flavor, which is called Nixiang or milk oolong. So with this variety from Taiwan, you can enjoy all the goodness of the green tea together with a hint of milk flavor. Another very interesting study that Dr. William Lee highlights is that tea blends may be more potent than consuming a single tea. So here are four different teas that we've tested. They're all common ones. Chinese jasmine, Japanese sencha, Earl Grey, and a special blend that we prepared. You can see clearly that the teas vary in their potency from less potent to more potent. But what's very cool is when we actually combine the two less potent teas together, the combination, the blend, is more potent than either one alone. This means there's food synergy. If you are afraid of the caffeine in tea, then you could go for decaffeinated tea. You can get decaffeinated green tea, decaffeinated with water decaffeination mm. process, not the solvent. So there are companies that actually tell you that they, they probably tell you that they remove the caffeine using a water process. The second beverage that is healthy and may help us live a longer life is coffee. And I'm having breakfast and I thought I would actually share with you what I'm having. Here's some coffee. Coffee's got chlorogenic acid, which is actually good for your metabolism. It also activates your health defenses, anti-androgenic, anti-inflammatory. I love coffee. A study was published in the journal Annals of Internal Medicine of 171,000 people in their 50s living in the United Kingdom. And it showed that those who drank two to three and a half cups of coffee per day had a 30% lower risk of all-cause mortality. That means death from any cause. The people came from a database called the UK Biobank that has a half a million people participating and the study took place over nine years. So what's in coffee that is so beneficial for health? Coffee has a natural chemical called chlorogenic acid that does a lot of things. It improves your blood flow, stimulates your own stem cells to help your organs regenerate. It improves the gut microbiome, which lowers inflammation and improves the metabolism. It's an antioxidant and chlorogenic acid also improves your immune system. So we gather that coffee is beneficial to our health. Is drinking organic coffee even better? Organic coffee has more chlorogenic acid than conventionally grown beans. Chlorogenic acid, which helps to repel insects as well, in organic coffee bean has three times as much chlorogenic acid. The third food that can be made into a great beverage is chocolate. Cacao or chocolate. It turns out that studies have been done where if you take chocolate with high flavanols and make a hot chocolate out of it, and you drink it just twice a day, two cups a day, uh, for 30 days. You can start by measuring your stem cells, and, and this is from 16 subjects, and you can make the stem cell levels. This is two cups of hot chocolate, of high flavanol hot chocolate, just twice a day. By the way, all of these patients had cardiovascular disease. They had documented blockages in their arteries, in their heart, and they could get more stem cells going. That is a small study, but really, really interesting to think about. So again, we need to pay attention to what kind of studies these are. This is a clinical trial. Um, it's a small study, but it, it actually is really important because it correlates with some of the other information I showed you. A larger study, 20,000 people in Germany showed that those who ate seven and a half grams of chocolate per day lowered the risk of heart attack or stroke by 39%. Okay, what is 7.5 grams of chocolate? It's about three chocolate chips. Gotta be dark chocolate, not that much. And you know, it's, by the way, I want to say it's not the dairy in the chocolate, it's not the sugar in the chocolate. It is that natural chemical in cacao. 
And that's what we need to be able to do is the final product that we're served up by companies isn't necessarily what's good for us. But we need to be able to discern what it is that is actually in the food that might be doing us a favor. If you take the really dark chocolate, like 73% cacao, the really dark chocolate, and you make it into a high flavanol hot chocolate drink, and you have it twice a day. This was the clinical study. They found in people who wound up actually having, drinking the hot chocolate twice a day over the course of a month, they doubled the number of stem cells compared to the people who didn't drink hot chocolate. So the question is, is that important? Well, when they measured their blood flow, mm -hmm. what they did is they put a blood pressure cuff on them and which, you know, kind of lowers the, uh, the circulation of the blood. Then they let it go. They found that the blood flow was much vastly improved. So here's a functional result that actually means it makes a difference. So who's going to complain about chocolate? Who's going to complain about tea? Who's going to complain about a Mediterranean diet? I mean, you go out to eat. These are the things we love. Here is the final important remark on chocolate from Dr. William Lee. Chocolate is a confection. Like if you get a Milky Way bar or Three Musketeers, I mean, you know, like Halloween candy, all right, that's a confection. It's got mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff and actually not that much real cacao. But get a bar, which you can find in almost any grocery store now, that's 80% 80, 80 or higher mm -hmm. chocolate, cacao. Now you're talking about essentially something that's mostly plant-based because that's what cacao is. It gives yeah. you dietary fiber. It gives you polyphenols from the chocolate. And we've done some research that was presented at the American Society of Nutrition's annual meeting that showed that the stuff in dark chocolate can cut off the blood supply feeding cancers. It's an anti ah. And we actually tested with leukemia cells, for example, and it directly is toxic to nucle leukemia cells. It kills leukemia cells. Another healthy beverage Dr. Lee frequently brings up is pomegranate juice. This was covered in our previous video on top five fruits that fight cancer. So don't miss out watching that video if you haven't already done so. When it comes to drinks, there is one beverage that Dr. William Lee considers that we should stay well away from and that is none other than alcohol. What can injure stem cells? You know, um, high doses of alcohol can damage and blunt your stem cell. The thing is on balance, people who drink a lot have damaged stem cells. Diabetes mm -hmm. is another state, a metabolic state that, you know, it really impairs, it cripples our stem cells. High blood sugar cripples our stem cells. So the excess of anything can be harmful, including to our stem cells. Some may believe that alcohol may help with sleep, but scientifically, that's not the case. What are you drinking for dinner? All right. Ironically, you know, even though people say you drink wine or beer, you know, alcohol makes me sleepy. It can make you sleepy, but actually, when you actually have booze in your system, you never actually get good, deep sleep. The alcohol in your brain actually doesn't allow you to go dive deep. So you kind of a little bit near the surface you're restless you're not you're not getting full renewal sleep and so that's why you know it's important just to recognize that among other reasons you want to control alcohol intake you know cut down or cut out it will interfere with your sleep